James, who is most to blame for the Steelers' disappointing season? I would have to give that to Mike Tomlin. And mm. the reason I give it to him, because he's the head coach. He has to go out there and, and get their team, get this team ready. You've had instances where the defense plays well. You had instances where the offense plays well. And you know that they're capable of doing that. If you look at the defense that, you know, he's actually built, I mean, I think he has six or seven first-rounders. He has a couple second-rounders through either draft or, or trade. So he's yep. put together a defense that should be capable of going out there and stopping, uh, you know, stopping offenses. And I think at the end of it, the Achilles heel has been the defense not able to come through in the end. So, um, you know, I have to put that on, on, on Mike Tomlin, mm -hmm. even though – he has, you know, won a, a significant amount of games. He's won Super Bowls. But if you even look at that and you go back, the Super Bowl that he did win was basically a Bill Cowher-based team. Right. Um, the team that actually went in 2010 was still a majority of Cowher. And since then, um, I think he's reached the AFC Championship game one time. And over the course of the last two years, uh, mm -hmm. he's lost just the first, yeah, first game to Jacksonville yep. where the defense gave up. 40, 50 something yeah. points. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this year they have a possibility of not making it. So mm -hmm. all that has to go on, uh, Coach Tom. Yeah, I'm going to give the Lions here the, the blame to Coach Tomlin also because I don't think he did a good enough job of controlling the, the auxiliary noise that was emanating from his locker room. Mm -hmm. I said this early on, James. <clears throat> you played 14 years? 15. 15. I played 14. I never heard. Because the one thing that we don't, we don't do in the locker room is we talk about another man's money. Never. And when it comes to a contract, we always side with the players. Yeah. This was the first time I can honestly say mm -hmm. I'd heard players <laughs> side with the organization over a player about getting his money. Mm -hmm. And they were speaking. I'm like, what, what is this about? And that's what I was like. I remember talking to you, Skip. I was like, I don't know how Le'Veon comes back in there. Knowing how the offensive linemen feel about him mm -hmm. and how they hold him accountable. Yep. The same offense, some of the same offensive players had a problem with James Harrison mm -hmm. after he got released. Yep. They want him to go sit on his couch, not do anything, not get a chance to win a Super Bowl. Yep. So he's like, nah, I'm going to go on up here. This team won't me. I'm going to go on up here and try, mm -hmm. try to get, I'm gonna get a little, little money too. Mm -hmm. If I get a chance to play for a Super Bowl, I think Mike got to do a better job because, man, Ben, and Ben quick to point them fingers. He needs to do a better job. What he should have done from the beginning, like, look, guys. Until Le'Veon gets back, we're not going to discuss Le'Veon Bell. We're going to talk about the guys that we have in this locker room mm -hmm. that's going to be here from the jump. If and when he comes back, we'll discuss mm -hmm. that situation. So, anytime his name comes up, I would prefer you pre refer mm -hmm. them to me. Yep. We're not going to discuss it. Mm -hmm. They discussed this early on. The organization also bears some culpability because they told Le'Veon Bell they were... What else did they need to see? The guy played till the ink was dry on his contract. They franchise him. Le'Veon, I think, came to the realization, I see what y'all trying to do. Y'all yep. <laughs> want to put another 400 carries on me, use me up, and yep. then say, nah, we good. He said, nah, that's not going to happen. Yep. So I'm going to sit this whole year out. Skip, they got too many voices coming out of that locker room. They're not a very united team. They're not. Because one, you know, one, okay, we're going to stay, we're going to stay in the locker room, we're not coming out for the anthem. Coaches go stand, and then we got guys at the end of the tunnel, and guys mm -hmm. need to see the flag. So there's a lot going on, but until Mike Tomlin sets the temperature of this room, mm -hmm. say, this is how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. This is not how we're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to have these little fractions. You're going to have guys speaking out, mm -hmm. and it's not conducive for you to have a winning mm -hmm. organization. You'll right. win a few games here or there, but they vastly underachieved. They're one of the most disappointing teams okay. in all of football. All right, so I'm going to ask James a question, just to be fair to Mike Tomlin, and I'm not saying this is the case, but do you feel like you still have any lingering bitterness toward Mike on the way they they handled your departure from Pittsburgh? No, I asked okay. for a release, like I said, okay. early in the year, and they right. didn't give that to me. Okay. If they had gave me my release early in the year, I probably would have never been in New England. Because there were times I remember that I read you showed up and you didn't even know that you weren't dressing exactly. for that game. It was, okay. it was times where I practiced all week and show up, and I'm thinking I'm going to be dressed. Okay. Uniform, no, not uniform. in the locker. Yeah. So, now, that said... As many times as I've said on this show, I love Mike Tomlin from a distance, and if I could play in the NFL, I'd want to play for that guy, but I don't know him inside the locker room, and I'm with you and both of you. He does not have control of his football team, and it shows on the football field occasionally in the lack of discipline and focus that they play with or without, I should say, because 
if you boil down what's wrong, and again, to your point, they're, they're ranked 15th in points allowed. That's it, It's got to be better. That That's not steel curtain Pittsburgh defense. Mm-hmm. This defense, and again, it came alive against Brady, and it came alive a little bit against the Saints. I thought it played pretty well in those mm-hmm. two games, but you don't have anything to show for it because you're 8-6-1 and one, and you're just clinging to – the, the last life that you have, the playoff-wise. You've lost four or five. You have. You've lost four or five games, and yet in those four, uh, those last five games, you went to the fourth quarter, and all five of them tied or leading, and you lost four of five. Mm-hmm. Okay, that somebody's got to pay for that. A lot of times you give the game away because they're minus 10 in turnover ratio, and you know and I know, you guys have been around good teams before, you can't be minus 10 and right. be a, a Super Bowl-type team, right? You'll be minus the playoffs. You'll be you minus the playoffs. So why, why are they minus 10? Because they gave the ball away 25 times. Why was that? Because Ben threw 16 interceptions, and they lost nine fumbles, and two of them were Ben's lost fumbles. So it's not clean enough. You know, they, they, they have all this firepower. They're fourth in points scored, and Ben's – what is he, third in QBR? So there's lots of – lots about of, to throw for 5,000 yeah, yards, isn't he? He's yeah. like 4,800 yards or something? 48, 42. Mm-hmm. That ranks first in the NFL. Yeah, and it got you 8, 6, and 1. It got you a tie against Cleveland. You, you can't do that. It got you a loss at Denver. That, that's no you good. That. And you know what happened at the end of that game. And it, Oakland. And Oakland. Really? You lost to Oakland. Okay? Really? Okay. So – is it fair for us to conclude that Mike Tomlin deserves to lose his job? Yeah, it is fair. Do you think he really will? I don't, no. because they just don't do that. No. I don't. I don't right? think. I don't, I, and I don't really think it's fair to say that he should should lose his job. That's just really not something the Steelers do. Um, as, as you, see, I think worst case scenario, he'll be playing his last mm-hmm. year on his contract mm-hmm. next year, and if things don't pan out the way they want him to pan out, Tomlin, they'll, yeah. Yeah, okay. they'll, they'll, they'll let him go. This, I don't see the Steelers firing him. That's just not in that's well, just not when, what that organization they, does. They've, they just, had, they've had three coaches since 1950, and all of them retired. Chuck Noll retired, mm-hmm. Bill Carr retired, and then Mike Tomlin got the job. He's in what, year 15, year 16 right mm-hmm. now? So he's just, I think he's the second longest tenured with one team behind Coach Belichick. Coach Belichick's been there since 2000. Mike Tomlin's been there since what? 07? 07. Hmm. So I don't 07, see yeah. I don't I don't see him going anywhere anytime. So, but there's too many things, Skip. The mere fact that you know Ben speaking the way he does is, is calling out his teammates. Antonio Brown, recording. I mean, you you beat Kansas City, and the dude is Facebook Live. What other te- what other, what other and, teams? And about he put you in a bad put Tomlin in a yeah, bad spot because, 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 because Tomlin's go- ripping on New England. Right. Yeah. Can that change, though, if he just suddenly is stricter, he sets the temperature, the tone differently? Can players adapt to that, or is this just who he is? I, I, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if players can, can adapt to that because you've been used to a certain standard for exactly. so long yeah. that if you try and change that now, the players like, are really going to revolt against you. Yep. That's so, why it's easy, to, it's easy to be nicer. You come in and you lay the gauntlet down, because I can always, you know, pull the reins in. Right. It's hard to tighten the reins once I've been a certain way for an extended period of time. See, Coach Coughlin, like Coach Belichick, it's easy for Coach Belichick because he's already established who he right. is and what he is. So if he wants to give you a day off, you can accept mm-hmm. that. But, man, Mike, you better get a hold of this. You, yep. got, too, you got too many guys talking and so, doing all this So why training. do I say I want to play for him? Because he seems like he's the ultimate players coach, and now it's gone way to a fault, exactly. right? I mm-hmm. love the matter of factness. Yeah. Right. That's what they call it, matter of fact, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Danger of I mean, did, did you? Oh, you, uh, what, 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 you, you say that. I mean, what's what going on, Jay? No, I'm he was matter of fact with you. Huh? I, I'm just it, that's what I'm. I mean that I'm like I said I'm not going pour pour nothing on it, but like it wasn't <laughs> matter of fact with me. So I, I mean, okay. Did did you enjoy his company in the locker room? You know, just being around him, which yeah. is fun to play yeah, for. Yeah, okay. yeah, He was fun to play for. But like like I said, when it came down towards uh you know towards the end and and you know I'm trying to get straight answers, I can't get nothing. So that's really like the last you know year or so. That's really where we had our. You know, our, right, so our then, differences. The, the Even, truth is he revealed himself to be like most of the coaches in this league, right? Uh, I don't I don't think most of – like, I didn't have that problem with, with other coaches. You know what I'm saying? I, I got straight answers. Even, uh, you know, I thought I was getting, you know, uh, you know, straight answers from him until it got to that point to where I'm like, hey, like, what's – you know, what is it? Like, tell me. I got a, pl- you, I got a plan for you. That's what That was his thing. I got a – you know, well, what's the plan? Because I'm, I'm sitting on the sideline, you know, mm-hmm. even to the point to where – uh, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to to Mr. Rooney. I'm talking to Art, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm like, can y'all just release me? Like, mm-hmm. he's like, no, he has a plan for you. I'm like, well, Mr. Rooney, what's the plan? Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't know what the plan is, but he tells me he has a plan for you. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I don't know what to, mm-hmm. you know, 
well, how to take that. Well, Belichick had a plan for you, right? Yeah, yeah. And I wish Belichick had a plan for you this year. I wish you were still there. Because I think you could, seriously, couldn't can take, they rush the passer at all? I couldn't, I couldn't take another year. Uh, I did Cincinnati away from my kids, and yeah, I, know, I, I know. realized it was going to be that, and I couldn't I couldn't take another year. Well, that. then good for you. Yeah. yeah. It's good to have your perspective. Because yep. it is nice to have that insight. <laughs>